दिस इज भारत एफ एम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत ये है भारत एफएम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत हेलो नमस्ते एंड गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीवन आई एम वसुधा देश पांडे वॉलेंटियर इन सिटीजन्स क्लाइमेट लॉबी आई एम फ्रॉम नॉर्दर्न केंटकी चैप्टर एंड वी हैव कम अप विद सिक्स एपिसोड सीरीज एंड टुडे इज आवर थर्ड एपिसोड and i'm i'm happy to invite two guest speakers donald adu who is a program director and todd elvins who is a national actions director thank you so much for and i'm very happy to have you on the stage over to uh, don thank you all right thanks for suda um, yeah. i really appreciate it and welcome everyone to another episode with citizens climate lobby on barat fm and barat tv My name is Donald Adu. I am the program director for Citizens Climate Lobby, and we are delighted to have you with us today. Uh, Citizens Climate Lobby is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to creating the political will for a stable climate. We empower individuals of all backgrounds to engage in democracy to pass meaningful climate legislation through Congress. We have chapters uh, all over the United States, and we are in over 50 countries. So chances are there's one near you. Today I have with me Todd Elvins who is Citizens Climate Lobby's National Actions Director. How are you doing today Todd? I'm doing great Don. Thanks for having me on the show. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Well, I'd love to start by just uh hearing how did you originally get involved with uh, Citizens Climate Lobby? Yeah, it was uh the year 2012. I went to my very first uh, CCL meeting. It just happened to be at uh, Scripps Institution of Oceanography here in San Diego. I uh, you know before that in about 2010 I had read Elizabeth Colbert's book Field Notes from a Catastrophe which laid out the climate problem in uh detail factual detail and uh, so I had been casting around looking for a an a volunteer opportunity and when I came upon CCL it just clicked with me instantly I uh, in 2012 I went to that meeting I learned that CCL was laser focused on uh solving a very big problem with a, a an amazing uh climate solution that is uh fair and uh low cost and effective and uh and CCL only does one thing it advocates that solution to the US Congress try to get that uh legislation enacted in the US Congress and that was just the perfect thing for me to work on by 2015 I was spending all my time volunteering with CCL uh we hear that story from a lot of volunteers and uh by 2017 i had joined the ccl staff and i've been on the staff for four years now awesome cool thanks todd uh well so as the national action director i mean we really see action as kind of the antidote to despair around here so we're we're always giving folks actions can you tell me a little bit about what your job entails you know there there are all kinds of actions that we can take um how does that play out for you in your role Right so I'm uh, primarily responsible for four things at CCL. Uh it sounds like a lot and it is a little bit more than a full-time job but I uh support all 65 of our online action teams. You could think of them as affinity groups and I think we're going to talk more about that. I also uh, write the monthly action sheet which goes out to all almost 600 of our chapters here in the United States and I uh co-write that with our CCL president uh, Madeline Para. and that's a list of actions suggested actions that we think that our chapters uh could and should want to do during the course of the month and that goes out monthly uh a lot of our chapters here in the United States they meet on the second saturday of the month there's a national call and uh so a lot of our chapters uh they also meet individually as a chapter that day and they'll take a look at that action sheet and uh decide what of those actions they want to do during the course of the month. Uh I also maintain our online action tools and we've been uh using our action tools quite a bit lately. We've had a number of national actions where we ask volunteers across the country to call or write or tweet their members of Congress. Uh for example, just recently, the Growing Climate Solutions uh 
Growing uh, Climate Solutions Act passed in the U.S. Senate 92 to 8, which is just amazing. Uh, 47 Republican senators voted for that in favor of that bill uh, that has uh, climate in the name of the bill. Fantastic. And so uh, we had a number of actions around that bill. Uh, one of the actions was to uh, ask your senator, if they're not already a co-sponsor, to vote in favor of the bill when the bill comes to the floor uh, for a vote. So it looks like uh, the 4,500 volunteers who wrote their senators might have had an impact because the bill passed uh, by such a wide margin. Uh, going back to my job at CCL, I also uh, help to supervise our endorsement program. So we go to community leaders and we ask them to endorse the Energy Innovation Act, which is a bill in the House of U.S. House of Representatives, which is a uh, you know our uh, favorite uh, carbon pricing bill. Awesome, very cool. Dodd, you mentioned uh, working to put together actions that uh, go out to all 600 chapters. Um, what, tell me a little bit about that process, uh, coming up with actions for that many people and that diverse a group. Um, it must be challenging. Yeah, it's definitely a group effort. We start at least a month in advance where we put together uh, ideas. Uh, we might have a list of 10 ideas. Uh, and then Madeline and I and some other folks on the staff uh, will look at that outline and we'll pare it down to probably three or four actions. Uh, we'll usually have two or three big actions. Uh, then we'll have some bonus actions, which might be a social media action or a grassroots action or a grass tops action. And we'll always have a communication exercise where we ask our volunteers to practice. Uh, they might practice inviting a friend or a relative to join a, C, uh, join a join CCL or join a CCL event. Uh, they might uh, practice uh, talking to a staff member in a congressional office, uh, or they might practice something else. But they're really pr practicing for when they're on the spot. Uh, lately, we, uh, we're getting ready to go out and start tabling again in person. And so uh, we have a communications exercise where volunteers practice being at a table and a table visitor, one volunteer, uh, might uh, uh, pretend to be someone visiting the table uh, and say something like, hey, what's this about? Tell me about what is this citizens climate lobby? What do you do? And then the other volunteer gets to practice uh, engaging uh, with that table visitor. And you might think that the first thing that they might do would be to uh, start talking and just talk and talk and talk for 10 minutes. But it turns out that's not the best first thing to do. The best first thing to do is to ask some open questions and find out uh, where is this table visitor on uh, the climate issue and then engage with them that way. So anyway, that's the communication uh, exercise part of the action sheet. Awesome, very, very cool. Um, you mentioned like grass tops and grassroots. Could you define those for us? Like what, what does that mean? And what are some actions related to those? Right, so uh, grassroots is the idea of going out into the community. So our, volu our CCL volunteers go out into the community and engage with lots of people in the community. And you know, we think of them as constituents because they're in a congressional district, they're in a congressional uh, state where they have two senators in the congressional district, they have a US uh, representative, a member of the House of Representatives. And our overarching goal is for our members of Congress, both representatives and senators, to hear from constituents and community leaders that carbon pricing is overwhelmingly popular in the district and the state. And so we want uh, members of the community, constituents uh, to be vocal, to tell their uh, representative that uh, we love carbon pricing. We want carbon pricing enacted in the US House, House of Representatives and the same in the Senate. We want uh, constituents to reach out to their senators and say, we want carbon pricing enacted in the Senate. And so, uh, we just want our uh, members of Congress to hear over and over and over again from not only constituents uh, in the district and the state, but also community leaders. And so the community, and this is grass tops. Uh, so the grass tops outreach work that we do is reaching out to community leaders where those community leaders might be a, a local elected officials, the mayor, the city council, uh, the county commissioner, a state level uh, legislator, so these, uh, these 
uh, community leaders have extra, uh, extra persuasive ability with members of Congress because they represent groups of people, not just individuals. And so as a community leader, it might also be a faith leader or it might be a, uh, a large local employer. So large local employers are great because uh, they represent economic activity in the district and they also represent jobs. And so uh, we all know that uh, members of Congress are very interested in jobs and economic activity in the district. So hearing from local, local uh, 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 the CEOs of local employers uh, and business owners is a great way to get their attention and uh, be persuasive uh, to those members of Congress. So that's grassroots and grass tops. Uh, you know, the other uh, uh, levers of political will, maybe you've heard about this in other episodes, uh, are media, reaching out to the media, the newspapers, television and radio. And also uh, another level uh, lever of political will is chat building chapters. And of course, lobbying is our fifth lever of political will. Thanks, Todd. That's great. Um, you know, do you, you you've talked about a lot of different actions, and the, some of these are seem seem like pretty big. Uh, you know, do do people need to have like any experience taking these types of actions before uh, b uh, before they become a volunteer with CCL? No, absolutely not. You know, we don't require any experience when you join CCL, and you've probably heard that a good way to get involved in CCL is to join our uh, Wednesday night informational session where you can kind of learn about the values of CCL and our methodology and how we take action. So that's a great way to get started. And we might talk about uh, that more later on. But uh, you don't have to have any skills. Uh, you know, part of our mission statement at CCL is to uh, empower individuals to exercise their individual uh, political power. And so we're going to uh, coach and mentor uh, the volunteers in CCL to do that. And I know when I first uh, went to my very first lobby meeting, I was terrified. I was in Washington, D.C. I had never met a member of Congress or been in a congressional office. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is going to be this is going to be a disaster. And of course, it wasn't because I had uh, five uh, volunteers with me and we all had a very specific role. And so I only had to make sure that my very uh, specific part of the meeting went well, which was taking notes. And so that was pretty easy. I didn't have anything to worry about. And of course, when you get into the congressional offices, the staff and the uh, members of Congress are almost universally uh, interested and engaging and friendly, and they want to hear about your concerns. And so getting back to your question, uh, you don't have to have any experience doing any of these things. Uh, just showing up is what we ask you to do and uh, have an open mind and be willing to learn uh, how to exercise your individual political power. Okay. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you mentioned earlier about some action teams. Um, can you tell me a little bit about those, maybe how they're organized and what some of them do? Sure, I'd be happy to. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, our uh, online action teams, uh, you might think of them as affinity groups. They're uh, groups of volunteers from all across the United States who work together online. And we've been using Zoom more than uh, longer than most of the people who are probably watching this. We've been using Zoom for, gosh, five years or more, I think. And so Zoom has just been great for our online action teams to get together. And of course, before Zoom, they'd get together on the telephone. Uh, our online action teams are, as I said, are groups of uh, volunteers who are brought together by a common passion or a common interest, and they get together uh, in pursuit of CCL's mission of enacting uh, carbon pricing in the U.S. Congress. And so they're all working toward that mission uh, in their own way. And so our 65 online action teams are in five categories. Uh, they are analysis and impacts, business and labor, chapter development, common interests, diversity, faith, skill building and support, uh, and state and international. Wow. Um, uh, can you tell me a little bit about the, the international aspect of this? Um, is there opportunity for folks outside of the U.S. to engage? Yeah, there are. I, I'm not a, a super expert in uh, the international uh, part of CCL, but we do have five action teams 
uh, and they are uh, led by our CCI folks, the folks at Citizens Climate International, and they uh, have chapters all over the world, uh, which was not part of CCL's original plan to have chapters in other countries. It just sort of grew organically as people in other countries heard about the CCL model, uh, treating your elected officials with respect and admiration and appreciation and meeting with them and staying in communication with them and moving them up the support ladder toward whatever it is that you want them to vote for, which in our case, of course, of course is carbon pricing. Uh, and so we now have chapters, as I said, all over the world. And we do have uh, an action team called Global Climate Civics. So if anybody uh, watching wanted to learn more about our international activities, that's a great place to start. Uh, go to Citizens uh, Climate Lobby Community area and click on Connect and then Action Teams and then look in the lower right corner for global climate civics, and you can learn all about all of our international activities. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. We'll also be featuring Joe Robertson from CCI uh, on one of our episodes as well. So do stay tuned for, for that, and we'll get more into the international aspect. Uh, bringing it back to the, the actions that you mentioned, uh, you talked a little bit earlier about the Growing Climate Solutions Act and uh, the fact that that passed by a wide margin in the U.S. Senate. We're very happy about that, and uh, but I'm I'm curious. You mentioned that there was a call to action around that. Um, that's not our specific piece of legislation. You know, we we're always advocating for the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. So why actions around other bills like the Growing Climate Solutions Act? Yeah, that's a great question, and I think my short answer for that is positive reinforcement. We want our senators to. Uh, to know that their constituents want them voting yes on bills that deal with the climate situation. Uh, and so, you know, before the vote in the Senate, we had an action where we reached out to the senators and we asked them, you know, when this bill comes to the floor, I want you to vote for it. And we had 4,500 uh, messages uh, delivered to Congress uh, asking them to vote in favor of that bill when it came to the floor. And uh, even before that, uh, there were, I think there were maybe 45 or 48 co-sponsors of that bill, which is a lot of co-sponsors in the Senate. And that was probably a month and a half ago or so. We had an action where we said, uh, if you're not already a co-sponsor on this bill, we'd like you to co-sponsor this bill. And, you know, we thought this bill has a pretty good chance of passing. And so we put a lot of uh, emphasis on helping this bill to get through the Senate. So we've actually had three actions uh, after the vote. Uh, we had another action. In fact, it was just yesterday, July 8th, where we had uh, we put out an action to all of our volunteers in North America, uh, actually in the United States, uh, and we asked uh, we asked them to thank their senators uh, for voting uh, yes on that bill. And one or more senator, one or both senators, uh, voted yes on that bill in 49 states. The only state where uh, both senators voted against the bill was Massachusetts. Sorry, Massachusetts. Uh, but all the other 49 states had one or, or both senators vote in favor of that bill. And so yesterday's action, I haven't looked at the numbers yet, but I know it's uh, more than 4,000. Uh, those senators who voted for the bill got a thank you message. Uh, in fact, they got uh, probably uh, dozens or hundreds of thank you messages. So that's positive reinforcement. So the next time a bill comes along, uh, that deals with climate, we want that senator thinking, wow, the last time I voted in favor of a climate bill, I got a lot of thank yous. So I'm going to think uh, about voting in favor of this climate bill, too. <laughs> That's really cool. It's uh, Congress, the Congress is kind of like kids, you know, you just got to give them the positive reinforcement. <laughs> yeah, I that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, uh, we, we work with carrots. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Absolutely. Uh oh. How uh, you 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 mentioned these numbers like you know forty eight hundred uh, forty two hundred um, actions kind of taking place. How do you know those numbers? How do you know folks are actually doing uh, doing those actions? Yeah, we have a couple of ways. Uh, all of our online action tools they automatically log the action in our database, and so it's, so long as our volunteers are using our online tools, they don't have to worry about logging the action themselves. 
but we also have a manual way that volunteers can log actions and they use that for things where there's not a tool. For example, uh, when they have a chapter meeting, the group leader will log that action in our action tracker and a list of all the volunteers who attended uh, that chapter. Uh, so then at the end of the month, we know, you know, how much political will have we generated? How many, uh, how many phone calls and emails and tweets and chapter meetings and meetings with editorial boards and meetings with community leaders and tabling events and presentations at Rotary Clubs? How many of those have we done? And of course, over the years, those, uh, those numbers have all been going in the right direction. So we're happy about that. And by right direction, you mean more. <laughs> more. That's right. More. Excellent. Excellent. Um, what? Um, how many actions do you usually see uh, taking place every month? So, uh, our, you know, when we do one of these one-day events, uh, one-day campaigns, uh, we'll often see uh, somewhere between three thousand and six thousand calls, or writes, or tweets in a single day, or in the course of two or three days, as the volunteers open their email and say, "Oh, I was supposed to do something yesterday. I'd better do it." So they don't always do it on exactly that day, but they, uh, you know, but thousands of them do get around to doing it. So that's great. And we also have something that we call our monthly calling campaign, uh, where we. Uh, generate a steady, what we call a steady drip of phone calls. And that steady drip uh, ensures that every member of Congress is getting a phone call or a phone call every day, or maybe multiple phone calls per day about climate. So we keep it on their radar every single day. And we have thousands of our volunteers signed up for that monthly calling campaign. Uh, and they get, you know, when it's their day, uh, your day might be the 17th of the month. You'll get an email that day and it says, here's a suggested script and here's the phone number to call. And when you're done calling, click this button. And then that action is logged automatically in the database so that you don't have to uh, worry about logging that. So we have both kinds of actions. We have the kind of campaign where there's a lot of calls and messages and tweets on a single day. And we also have this steady drip, drip, drip of making sure that every member of Congress gets a call every day about climate change. Mm. Why is it important that every member of Congress get that call or multiple calls a day? We want to keep this on their radar. We know that uh, members of Congress have a staff meeting every week and we want climate to be on the agenda of that staff call uh, every week. It probably isn't, but we do our best to try to make that happen. We've heard that there's a Goldilocks number where uh, if a member of Congress gets 12 messages or phone calls or tweets in a single week, uh, you know, that number is maybe 12 to 15. Uh, you know, it'll, that topic, that issue will make it onto the agenda of their staff call for that week. And we want that, you know, our ideal would be for that to happen every single week. So in the staff call, you know, the member of Congress and all of their staff are on the staff call and they're talking about climate every week. And that's not happening, but that is our goal. We'd really like that to happen. And and to get there, we just need more folks to make those phone calls? Well, I think everyone who's watching this show should immediately go to citizensclimatelobby.org and sign up. <laughs> <laughs> you, there's a button there that says join. If you click on action, you can pull that down and you'll see that one of the options is the informational session, which happens uh, every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, that's, I think, half an hour, 45 minutes. And you can learn about CCL's values and our methodology for uh, treating every member of uh, Congress with admiration and appreciation and respect and moving them up the support ladder so that they are ready uh, to vote in favor of climate legislation when it comes to the floor for a vote or moving it out of committee if they're uh, you know, on some of those key committees where uh, climate bills are sitting right now. Awesome, very cool. Um, are there any other types of actions that, that folks can take? You know, we, we think about, um, I re remember when I first got involved uh, or, and became aware of climate change, you know, kind of thinking of like, well, you know, changing my light bulbs or things like that. Um, the, these actions, uh, they, they seem a lot more concrete are there anything else that, that folks can do that uh, can help you know, persuade maybe members of Congress or elected officials to, uh, to, to make the leap into climate action? 
Well, you know, one of the members of our CCL advisory board is uh, Professor uh, Catherine Hayhoe, and she says the most important thing that you can do to help with the climate situation is to talk about it, because most people in the United States don't talk about climate change. And if everybody was talking about climate change all the time, uh, we'd be able to make faster progress. And so that's definitely the, the number one thing that I would ask uh, people to do is to talk about it. The other thing that Catherine Hayhoe says is that, you know, if people are maybe a little bit uncomfortable talking about climate change around the dinner table, but it's, it's not hard to talk about. And there are solutions. We know what the solutions are. We just need the political will to get those uh, solutions enacted in the U.S. Congress. And we've waited so long that we need massive, uh, massive solutions to pass through Congress and be signed by the president. And so talking about climate at the dinner table is a step in the right direction. And, uh, you know, Catherine Hayhoe says, we know that it's us, we know that it's real, we know that it's a big problem, and we know what the solutions are. So let's get going. <laughs> Wonderful. I love it. Um, any, any last words for folks out there or any, um, uh, anything you'd like to say in terms of how the best way for folks to get involved? Well, uh, I'd like to just bring it back to our action teams for just a minute. I think that if folks were to go and have a look at the directory of action teams, uh, you're, you're very likely to find that one that you're interested in. And uh, this page is visible to the public. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to have an account. You could just go to community.citizensclimate.org, community.citizensclimate.org, click on connect and then click on action teams. And you'll see a, a list of 65 action teams. Uh, I mentor and support and coach all of the leaders of these action teams. Some of these action teams have eight leaders and some of these action teams have grown so big and so active that they're almost a separate organization. Uh, our business climate leaders action team, which spends all their time working on grass tops, they, uh, they spend a lot of time going out and getting businesses uh, to sign car uh, carbon, uh, they call it uh, carbon pricing principles uh, declarations and other kinds of climate de declarations. They have 10 sector teams. Business Climate Leaders has a steering committee of 10 people that meets every week. They have multiple calls every month. They are a very active action team. So if you have an interest in uh, working, uh, pulling the grass tops lever, connecting with businesses, uh, letting them know about Citizens Climate Lobby, letting them know about the Energy Innovation Act and carbon pricing and how it's the most effective, uh, the most transparent, the least cost, uh, the most fair solution to solving the climate problem, get connected with business climate leaders and jump in and, and do some work. You don't have to work uh, like I did as a volunteer 40 hours a week. You can just work one hour a week and make a contribution. Uh, you know, some of the other action teams, we have uh, 14 faith-based action teams. So our faith-based action teams are involved in a really interesting project right now where a lot of them are tweeting their members of Congress because we know that the, uh, about a third of all the members of Congress are Catholic. So our Catholic action team, for example, uh, are tweeting at those uh, 160, I think, members of Congress who are Catholic. And... Uh, and saying, hey, as a fellow Catholic, I would like you to help with creation care. You know, we're put on this earth uh, to take care of our common home. And uh, this climate situation is a real problem. And I want you voting in favor, uh, supporting, co-sponsoring and helping to enact uh, climate solutions in the U.S. Congress. So that's an example of what uh, some of our uh, action teams are doing. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, thank you, Todd. I really appreciate you joining us today. I appreciate all of you for tuning in to Barat FM and Barat TV. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this, seg this segment, and we'll be back with three more segments uh, later, uh, later over the coming months. So please do turn back in, and thank you all for attending. This is Bharat FM. Bajega Bharat, Jumega Bharat. यह है भारत एफएम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत